Greetings. I would like to welcome you to our daily weekday Mass, held here at the National Shrine of St. Therese on the Carmelite campus in Darien, Illinois. The Carmelites cherish praying and celebrating with you. This shrine is the blessing of a generous gift from the Margie and Robert Peterson Foundation. Good morning, and welcome to the National Shrine of St. Therese. Today's Mass is being offered for the intentions of all the members of the Little Flower Society and the Infant of Prague, and we remember in a special way Father Terry Seer, who is in hospice care. And so we begin our celebration by blessing ourselves in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with each of you. In coming into the Lord's presence, we ask for forgiveness and healing, especially for the times when we did not realize just how blessed we are to all the gifts that God has given to us. Lord Jesus, you chose ordinary people as apostles Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you draw us beyond our limitations. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have the words of everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And so let us pray. O God, who with untold mercy were pleased to choose an, as an apostle, St. Matthew, the tax collector, grant that sustained by his example and intercession, we may merit to hold firm in following you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, I, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to live in a manner worthy of the call you have received, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another through love, striving to preserve the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace one body and one spirit, as you were also called to the one hope of your call, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. But grace was given to each of us according to the measure of Christ's gift, and he gave some of us as apostles, others as prophets, others as evangelists, others as pastors and teachers, to equip the Holy Ones for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ, until we all attain to the unity of faith and knowledge of the Son of God, to mature manhood, 
to the extent of the full stature of Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Their message goes out through all the earth. Their, Their message, message goes, goes out, out through, through all, all the earth. earth. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament proclaims his handiwork. Day pours out the word to day, and night to night imparts knowledge. Their, Their message, message goes, goes out, out through all, all the earth. earth. Their mes <clears throat> not a word nor a discourse whose voice is not heard. Through all the earth their voice resounds, and to the ends of the world their message. Their, their message, message goes, goes out to all, to all the, the earth. earth. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. We praise you, O God. We acclaim you as Lord. The glorious company of apostles praise you. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. As Jesus passed by, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the customs post. He said to him, follow me. And he got up and followed him. While he was at table in his house, many tax collectors and sinners came and sat with Jesus and his disciples. The Pharisees saw this and said to his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? He heard this and he said, Those who are well do not need a physician, but the sick do. Go and learn the meaning of the words, I desire mercy, not sacrifice. I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners. The word of the Lord. My dear friends in Christ, in yesterday's first reading from the prophet Isaiah, we heard these words, seek the Lord while he may be found, call him while he is near. Let the scoundrel forsake his ways and the wicked his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord for mercy, to our God who is generous and forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. As we listen to those words today, we are then reminded by St. Paul in his letter to the Ephesians, where he urges the Christians to live in a manner that is worthy of their call to humility, gentleness, patience, and lovingly bearing with one another. So as we celebrate today's feast day of St. Matthew, we again are confronted with a very simple question by the Lord, come and follow me. We have seen the same invitation last week when we heard in the gospel, the woman who is a sinner comes and washes the feet of Jesus. We hear the same word and invitation when Jesus invites his disciples. They saw him and they ask him, Lord, where do you live? And he simply says, come and see. What I find very astounding and wonderful <clears throat> is that God's invitation to us is so simple, and it doesn't take a lot of trying to decide why should we follow the Lord. Let us keep in mind today that each one of us is being called to be God's presence to others. And who are the people that qualify? Everyone especially sinners. That is why I gave the introduction today 
for us to hear that when God judges us, he doesn't judge us the way we do. He doesn't respond to us as we often respond to one another with limitations and often division. But he accepts us just the way we are. And St. Therese, I've mentioned this time and time again, that is why she says, God loves me just the way I am. But then in today's readings again, we are hearing God, what is it that he's looking for? What is it that we need to do in order to be effective and to be a good presence of Christ to others in the world? And the words that come to mind is to be patient with each other, to be loving, to bear with one another, to accept each other as God accepts you and I. And that is where the difficulty comes in. And we see it today in the gospel because there are people in our own lives that think that they are more perfect than anybody else. They don't see a need for God or for forgiveness. And so as a result, they just do, and maybe that's all of us, we do just as we please. Or we make the excuse that, oh, God couldn't call me, he couldn't use me in order to accomplish his work. And nothing could be further from the truth. So as we look at Matthew today, he was rejected by, by, by the people of his own time because of the kind of work he was involved. He was a tax collector. Tax collectors often opted the, the, the sum of taxes that needed to be paid in order to assure their own income and to make people's lives worse. They also cooperated with the foreign power, the Romans. And so it was very easy for the religious leadership and others of Jesus' time to say, why does Jesus invite somebody like him? Doesn't he know that he is a sinner? He can ask the same question about us. But God doesn't do it that way. He treats each of us as we deserve. And he gives to each of us certain blessings, as St. Paul talks about in the first reading today, that are not given to everybody. And so our whole challenge, I think, in life is trying to figure out what is the special gift or the gifts that God has given to me. And then the second follow-up question is, how do we share those gifts with others? That's what it's all about. And you know what? When we look at today's gospel and we see what happened here in Matthew's case, God simply looks at him. Jesus looked at him. He was already there as he is in each and every one of us. But he never forces himself on us. And that is so, so different from us human beings. We want to be in control. We want to control other people's lives. We think we really are not in need of God's love and forgiveness. And so we don't hear the voice of the Lord. And we do just what we want. And Jesus waits patiently, but today again he reminds us nobody is excluded from his love and from God's mercy. All we have to do is open our hearts, be present, and ask for the help that we need. And I think when we do this, then God can use us as he used the people that he chose in the Old Testament. I always laugh about how the excuses that they made when God asked him to go to, to his people and to, to speak to them, and they didn't want to do it. And you know, our excuses are pretty much the same. I'm too young, I'm too old, I'm too weak, I don't have time. It is amazing, all the excuses we have of doing what God is simply asking us to do, to be patient, to be compassionate, to be loving and understanding, and most of all, to allow the Lord to work through us. And so from the example of St. Matthew today, we can take confidence from that experience that no one is excluded 
from God using us to be his presence. And let us say, Lord, help me to be your presence. Help me not to be afraid. Help me to share what is best in me with all the people that I come in touch with. And I think when we do this, then we begin to realize, as Jesus says, I am with you wherever you go. So let us ask for his gift of love and his gift of courage to be able to bring others closer to the Lord. We know that we can do nothing by ourselves, and so therefore with confidence we place our petitions before the Lord. We pray today for missionaries and evangelizers, for teachers and preachers, and for all of us who are asked by the Lord to proclaim God's love and forgiveness, that we are open to that and willing to share it with others. We pray to the Lord. We pray for those who have been asked with the task of bringing peace and confidence to, to the nations and to our own country, that we do not divide people up because of our own thinking or what we want, but rather what God wants. For this we pray to the Lord. Let us be responsible, compassionate, and loving and caregiving to all the situations in which we find ourselves today, most of all sharing our giftedness with others, we pray to the Lord. And we pray for the poor, the outcasts, the sick, the dying, those who have no hope in their lives, that because of our presence here today, God will reach out to them and let them know that they too are blessed. We pray to the Lord. And for a moment now, let each one of us make her or his private intentions. And for all of these intentions, let us pray to the Lord. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for always reminding us that we are blessed because of you. Keep our hearts open so that we can respond with the same kind of love that you share with us and share that with all people. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, to your goodness we have this bread and wine to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. They will become for us our spiritual food and drink. And now let us pray that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we celebrate anew the memory of St. Matthew, we bring you sacrifices and prayers, O Lord, humbly imploring you to look kindly on your church, whose faith you have nourished by the preaching of the, the apostles. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you, Eternal Shepherd, do not desert your flock, your, your flock, but through the blessed apostles, watch over it and protect it always, so that it may be governed by those you have appointed shepherds to lead it in the name of your Son. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we say the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 
holy, holy Lord, God of hosts. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray, the partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Ronald, our Bishop, and all your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. And let us take a moment to remember them by name. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles, St. Joseph, Mary's faithful husband, and St. Therese, St. Matthew, whose feast day we celebrate, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we now dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with each one of you. Thank you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. I did not come to call the just, but sinners, says the Lord. Let us pray. Sharing in that saving joy, O Lord, with which St. Matthew welcomed the Savior as a guest in his home, we pray, grant that we may always be renewed by the food we receive from Christ, who came to call not the just, but sinners to salvation, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord is with you, and may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our Eucharistic celebration is now ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord and one another. And let us pray, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Our Lady of Mount Carmel, St. Therese, have a blessed day.